Welcome back to another crazy, fun episode of West of Nowhere. I am Levi, and joining me today is Mark again. Hello, Mark. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming. Um, Shane is visiting his offspring in Washington, who cool. Emmett just turned six, so that's fucking wild. Awesome. Um. Is his birthday did it already pass? Yeah, it it. Well, happy related birthday, buddy. Hell yeah, Emmett. I mean, I haven't seen him in person since he was like brand new, but mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, he was video chatting with him one time, and he uh super into uh, Power Rangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think I saw a post or something that was a photo. Yeah, and so, oh yeah, because he, I think he uh probably shared his Halloween pictures last year where he's Power Rangers. But um in the modern iteration of Power Rangers, uh there the Gold Ranger is named Levi. And so she huh. was like, I'm talking to Levi and he's like, Oh Levi, <laughs> Levi Weston? He's like, Yep, I'm talking to Levi Weston. I was like, hell yeah. Oh he was fucking that is so sweet. That makes my heart feel so good. Yeah. Like, it was great. Cute. Um before we get too far into it, I want to thank the Patreon people. Adam Pacino, Tony Burgess, Miles Glenn, Sam Norton, Colby Jordan, Jade Marsh, Natalie Tacarante, Mark Stadler. <laughs> and uh, this this is from Shane. He sent this to me. So it is Colton Jackhammer Sound. So. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> So, <laughs> um, if you oh, want to be one of those cool people, go to the link tree in the description and check it out. You can find the Patreon, and if you don't want to give us money, just follow it, share it with all your friends, whatever. Do all the things. All of the things. Yes. 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 So, what's new, bud? I haven't, I haven't uh, talked to you in a, well, face-to-face in a couple days. True. i yeah. um, just been working, and... Um... That's about it, man. It's been kind of busy. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So before I get into like asking you nursing stuff, right before we got it, <laughs> of course, of course, <laughs> right That's before we we're got, there. <laughs> right before we started recording, you were mentioning you just finished uh episode of Time Suck that we had been talking about. Oh, yes. Which is uh the two parter of the or the exorcism of Annalise Michelle. Yeah, uh, or Emily Rose. The well, yeah, so that's that, that that movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, is based off of this story, loosely. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. holy shit! So you you said you finally got to the audio. Yes. <sighs> How was that, dude? I I was driving. <laughs> it was in like <laughs> that's I was driving always when work, I'm yeah. It was, it was completely light out, and I was oh. like, I just got a really bad chill, and I'm like. Oh no! And then his wife did like the the jump scare or whatever. And yeah, I where just, she like, walked outside he, like, the window or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. I heard his general concern in his voice, and Dude. I'm like, oh no! Like, yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Holy yeah, shit. it was that was a trip. Um, that was very interesting. And thank you for sharing that podcast with yeah. me. Like, we had a talk in person about um, the lost books of the Bible, which yeah. then I continued after that because like, <laughs> yeah, all right, why wouldn't like, you? That's yeah. A good, yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm finally into the starting the next episode about the um, Spanish Inquisition, which oh, I know nothing about. It's also so, really but... good episode. It's kind of weird because he kind of went on a stretch there where it was all religious related topics, which was kind of yeah. kind of yeah. wild. Because, like, I mean, I've st- when I started listening to Time Suck, it was a lot of the more recent episodes I was listening to, and so um, just I mean, it was uh, a couple months ago. Basically, when I made that trip up to Wyoming, I was like, I'm just going to listen to the whole back catalog because I have fucking, you know, long ass drive to do. Yeah. So I was like, there and back, I can listen to a bunch of episodes. And I did. And um, so now I'm a I'm pa- little bit past where you are now. But yeah, yeah that, that yeah. fucking. Whew, 
man. What I, I audio when I was terrifying. I was listening to that because like as we were talking about that, I was on that episode, but I was closer to um the actual audio part where they play uh he plays a recorded audio of this lady during her exorcism and um she's german so uh yeah that that kind of like i don't know what she was saying but it fucking creeped me out just like because it was like prototypical exorcism kind of like Hot, like really rah, rah, kind of voice yeah you know? but then yeah. like the fucking guttural screams bro yeah if she was in a band holy shit like bro. that would be great but <laughs> dude what i was thinking i don't know if you've ever seen it but um have you ever watched any of the paranormal activity movies oh yeah oh okay. yeah so mm-hmm. in the first one um towards the end it's like right as shit's like amping up like about to get crazy there's a scene where they lock the thing out of the room. I got goosebumps already. Yeah, I know, right? That was the... <laughs> so they lock the thing out of the fucking room, and like the oh. door's shaking, and they're like holding it shut, and then all of a sudden you hear this crazy growl thing outside, and then it fucking... A ba- oh my god, bang. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. So uh, there's like a loud bang outside the room, and then yeah. they go out, and then yeah. the chandeliers swing in, and then that picture of yes. them is all... That growl reminds me of that fucking that lady's oh. fucking guttural screams. Yes. And if you look at was... pictures of her, she's like 90 pounds, no. sopping wet, you know, like, she's yeah. a petite lady before the exorcism. Yes. yes. And then, like, you were Super like, sad. oh my yeah. god, this is, this noise is coming out of this, like, she looks like a librarian, you know, like a very... Yes, she does, yeah. She actually, uh, fuck, I can't remember what actress she really reminds me of, like, like physically, but, um, Anyway, it's not important, but she's <laughs> she's not a big lady, so like no. these crazy screams are coming out of her, and I'm like picturing it in my head, I'm like oh my god, and like yeah, I can't imagine being in that room with the the priests and the family, and, and they were living with that. And I know, boyfriend. just like all the time. yeah. Shout out to that guy <laughs> for never fucking leaving. <laughs> Holy shit! I loved uh, Dan Cummings' <laughs> jokes about like how good the sex must have been or something. <laughs> just like, yeah. Ah his oh, segues are great but Dude. then like i'm like wait a minute <laughs> yeah oh yeah like it's hard to tell if it's like legit or not yeah yeah um but that was that was crazy uh yeah well actually what's what's kind of around this up but what do you what do you how do you feel about i guess demonic possession and the whole after listening to that and your i guess if you have any personal experience with anything supernatural so i guess like i don't know i i'm open to you know a lot of things i i, I remain highly skeptical about a lot of stuff too yeah, um, yeah, and you know that there was the people that wrote in after that episode where it's like, "Hey, man, like, or no, he he brought this up. He's like, why is it always, um, why yeah. is it always religious people?" And then somebody responded, and I thought that was pretty interesting. Whereas, like, if you're somebody who's you know bought in on reli- like it's hundred percent true to you, then your soul is actually more valuable to any kind of demonic whatever. And I don't really, you know, I don't know how to feel about it. I feel like there's, I mean, I, I, (laughs) I don't know how to say it exactly, but like, I don't think it's as cut and dry as like biblical terms. I think there's a lot more, uh, yeah, maybe a lot more interdimensional kind of thing dealing with than, than it's like, Hey, it's Jesus's son. And then all a bunch of guys and like, black leather that don't like him like i i, I don't think it's yeah. like that but i think there's like i don't know some some science that we don't understand that kind of melds together and um like i've had some crazy shit happen before but nothing like demonic like like um mm-hmm. like my my aunt for instance is like she i don't know what what you would consider but she's got these crazy dreams sometimes where it's like she can like she is really in tune with um things going on lucid and... like lucid dreaming like slightly yeah. controlling like well, more a- aware of what's going on in it no it's more like a lot of symbology a lot of uh things that are like um telling her about things going on like interesting um there's an example like the biggest one in my brain is um the one where there is a person that uh, she had known that um, 
that they were like the the woman that this guy was seeing ended up um uh, getting pregnant and then that lady ended up getting an abortion which <laughs> we'll be talking about abortion later but um <laughs> that's a little weird but she um had or a shadowing <laughs> yeah she had a dream with that dude's mom who had died holding a baby and he never mm. even told her about it crazy yeah okay and like she's like hey i just want to let you know like i had this crazy dream and then um you know after uh my cousin her son died not that long ago um i was talking to her and she was having more of these kinds of dreams where it's like i don't know it's it's kind of like a weird um thing because like she she uh, talked to him and he was like you know i you know i'm fine like you guys need to move on kind of like and you know you mm. can make the argument where it's like oh that's just her processing things but then there's stuff that she doesn't even know about that she dreams about and then like talks to the people about it and it's very very weird mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. one of one of uh one of the stories that like i think about a lot was like when growing up my dad lived in this uh house just south of the tracks in carney um like right by fifth avenue almost and you know that, okay. that crossing that's right there well that, about, is it are you talking about the crossing by jack and letterman uh, like the, uh you remember the company yeah that house that i lived at down that road like you would cross oh it. yeah yeah yes yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. there's okay. a there's yeah. another house on that same street um that my dad lived in when i was younger and that house was haunted because um well here's how him and some buddies that had never lived together from work decided they were all going to move in together. And it's a big house. It's got like four or five bedrooms in it. And, you know, it's pretty spacious. Um, and they're, you know, three or four of them, and you know, split evenly. It's not that not that expensive at all. And it had yeah. like, I think, two, two whole bathrooms, which was nice. Like, so it was nice and... Or, or not ergonomic <laughs> economical for, ergonomics <laughs> economical for you know some middle uh 20s 30s guys um and yeah. the first night there um my dad and his buddy Sh shane funnily enough but not the same one <laughs> um were in the basement drinking and i was i was like four when this happened um and like there's like running upstairs and it's like little kids running upstairs right and Shane's like, oh, mm. shit, I didn't know your son was here. And my dad's like, ah, he's he's not. <laughs> so they, it was just them. Oh, no. So they go running upstairs and there's nothing. And they're like, what the fuck? Oh, and no. yeah, and so there's nothing. And like little things happen. Like keys would, you know, get misplaced. My dad would see something behind him every now and like in the bathroom. There's one of those cabinet mirror deals. And he would like, uh, you know, see shit. And one day they were um, bullshitting with their neighbor across the street and the neighbor flat out was like, Hey, you guys have any weird shit happen <laughs> in the house? No. Oh, no. And my dad's like, Oh no, we have. And how do you know? And they're like, Oh, well, here's what happened. A uh, little, little kid that lived there accidentally shot himself uh, oh, shit. in the master bedroom uh, closet. And so my dad, dad and his roommates were like, what the fuck? So they go back in and uh it had been carpeted but there's hardwood underneath because it's on the main floor and mm -hmm. they go in and they pull the carpet up and there's a fucking black spot in the wood like they just carpeted over it instead of replacing the wood or sanding it down and then oh in God. in the closet wall mm -hmm. there's a hole and then you can see in that hole there's another little fucking hole from a, like the trajectory was accurate enough to be like a little kid sitting on the ground and oh my lord right and um mm. uh, so when when they found that out it made a lot of sense because like it's like this little kid didn't know he was dead so he's doing a lot of little kid shit and ah, yeah i had a room in the basement that had all my toys and shit and then like in the family room in the basement my dad had this my bed but he would just move it out there so i could watch yeah. tv and fall asleep when i was there <laughs> and one morning my fucking bed 
bounced like somebody jumped on the one side of it because it's oh, an old man. spring mattress. No. And so I, I was like, oh, shit, the dog's here. Like, I thought the dog came down like inside because he's outside dog most of the time. But I thought he came inside. I was like, oh, shit. And I couldn't find him. I was like, what the fuck? And so I just went no. upstairs. I never saw anything, but that was like, and in that same basement um, in the uh, toy room, like my toys would always be not where I left him. And I was the only kid that had yeah. shit there. Yeah. <clears throat> so no, it was like, you. as an adult, my dad, you know, would bring this story up randomly and tell me about it. I'm like, oh. So, like, I, you know, there's definitely something going on that I don't have a grasp on what it actually is. But, you know, I, I don't, I don't think labeling it as one thing or the other. Cause, like, if you, you know, I've talked to like really, um, passionate Christian people who, like, like, I talked to this girl one time, I asked her if she believed in ghosts, and she's like, well, I believe in, like, the Holy Ghost and, like, that kind of thing. I was like, so literally no other ghosts even fit your, like, narrative? Like, so yeah. it's all broken up and, like, categorized. Yeah, like, in a yeah. weird way where it's like, how do you guys not, like, and that, so you do that where there's people like that who think their shit's the, you know, that's it. But that all mm -hmm. the other fucking religious people, like all the other different religions, have their own versions of it. So I think, yeah, I think they all kind of meld together in some way. But it's not like as black and white as this is Christian and this is the truth, or like you know this is Islam and that's the truth. Like it's like yeah. very, you know, yeah, it's not one one like it's multifaceted that, like stake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And going back to that comment, I remember that one, and like I think it'd be very hard to like. um verify and like agree with the fact that more religious people get exorcisms done but obviously they're gonna get exorcism done if they think that's what it is yeah you know i feel like people that aren't raised in that type of faith if they were experiencing things like that they might more lean towards like psychosis and other stuff like that and i still think of like um he brought up the comment about how like um with the exorcism should have crazy strength and you know i think mm -hmm. about when i was a nurse at our behavioral health and like we would have to oh, take yeah. down people that like were thinner than me and smaller or just like you know lengthy and like it took multiple people to take like really really bad psychotic people down yeah. and like it's like no joke about that strength it, yeah it's crazy and, and like it's even even demented old people dude who so like i've not broken a hand my hand broken by like old people grabbing them and like yeah you could like punch this dude and he died type of thing you know yeah it's I don't know. I think, I think, um, at least with this like spirit slash demonic thing, I personally haven't had really anything happen to me. I think it's an interesting idea to like, think about, um, me being, I, I mean, I define myself as a Christian. Like, I think there's things like that. I don't necessarily, if you can delineate, you know, a demon from a ghost, or is it just a more powerful spirit or yeah. entity, whatever it yeah. is. I think it's out there. I just, I haven't experienced any of it. So it's it's hard to say. It's like I be, I'm a believer, but like at the same point in time, nothing's ever happened. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then like, how do you differentiate like a legitimate experience from like random things that happen? Like um, a big mm -hmm. one that a lot of people have experienced <clears throat> is the um, what's called the old hag, but it's it's or in scientific scientific term, it's sleep paralysis. But oh, before yeah. they had a term for it, before anybody had you know, whatever it was, they're like, oh, it's a fucking old haggity witch that sits on your chest and is trying to steal your soul mm -hmm. while you're sleeping, and that's yeah. why you can't move. Like, so, like, I've had sleep paralysis. The only time I've ever had sleep paralysis, I had it twice, and I lived in this one uh, uh, with my friends Nick and Olivia. I lived with them, and um, <laughs> they both had it at that same place, which fucking creeped me out more than me having it but like that it's like a very weird phenomenon but like it makes sense scientifically like your your brain wakes up but your body hasn't really caught up yet like it yeah it, it's very straightforward but like that kind happened of like when you like let your arm go numb you yeah. know like you can move it but like it's not completely there well like you can't even move like i don't know if you've ever had sleep yeah. paralysis or not but it's no no yeah i'm just saying like as a like yeah oh yeah, 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 yeah. Thing, but... but like however many hundreds of years before they even studied sleep effects on the mm -hmm. brain. Mm -hmm. well, we didn't even fucking 
realize that our thoughts came from the brain for however fucking long. So back then, yeah, sleep paralysis and is definitely something fucking creepy going on. Like, yeah, <laughs> you it's know? gotta be concrete. It can't be yeah. conceptualized. Yeah. And, like, it's gotta have something tangible. Dude, <clears throat> I had a weird thing happen to me. Um couple weeks ago i was at my buddy eric's house <laughs> maybe you're haunted like we're gonna discover like, probably spirits following Levi. <laughs> this fucking skeleton back here just starts moving in, no so. I, I know <laughs> <laughs> um uh so i was at my buddy eric's house and it was eric his girlfriend uh his friend and then me it was just four people and me i was sitting in a couch in the corner of the living room and then eric and his friend were cleaning up a board game they were playing and then Eric's girlfriend went to the bathroom, and I could see straight shot the bathroom, and then there's, like, a little closet just next to the bathroom. Like, if you left the bathroom and turned right, there's a closet. And then if you left the bathroom and just went straight, there's a uh, their spare bedroom where the, the friend was staying. And that's on the other side of the wall that I'm mm-hmm. facing in the living room. So I'm watching them clean up. She goes to the bathroom. I see... The door shuts, the light turns on, and there's like a gap like this underneath the door, so I could see the light very easily. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm sitting there, and I'm messing with my phone, and I look up because Eric had said something, and I was paying attention. And then I see who I thought was his girlfriend walk into the uh, the spare bedroom, and I was like, mm. I was like, oh, okay, well, she probably had to get something or something. But then I looked at the bathroom door, and it's still shut, and the light's still on. And I'm like, why did she shut the door and leave the light on? And then she opens the bathroom door and comes out. And I was like, oh, don't like that. <laughs> I said, everybody stop. Hold on. Did anybody go into that spare bedroom just now? And they all like look at me like I'm fucking insane. And I'm like, Whew. Eric, your fucking house is haunted, bro. I don't know how to tell you. <laughs> but I just literally saw somebody walk in. Oh, don't. Yeah, I was not a fan of that. So, anyway. Dang, no. <laughs> um, nope, I'm good. So, there's some new stuff going on. <clears throat> um, yeah, there is. So, I want to start out with this um, this kind of weird-ass tangent that this dude, he's a congressman or a senator. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what the fuck he is. Uh, representative. I'll just—he's a representative, Madison Cawthorn. He's a—he's a, a very um, uber Christian Republican guy, and he's in a wheelchair. So if you've ever uh, seen a professional politician guy in a wheelchair, that's probably him. He's a younger dude. He's probably our age. Um, anyway, so Hi. Roe v. Wade's been kind of like kicking up in a lot of places. Like, uh, things are, um. People are talking about it, and um, whether you agree with it or not, um, there is a lot of people that are doing some crazy pontificating on the subject, and this guy um, <laughs> is, uh, you know, he's one of one of the people that says some of the more bonkers things um, in a basically just a conversation he's having um on the subject he compared women to vessels earthen vessels carrying children Mm. right and um Mm. what he was uh kind of alluding to i don't i don't know what he was actually trying to say but what he ended up saying was that um I want the actual quote. I'm trying to find it, but um, I can't find it now. So, uh, earthen vessels sanctified by Almighty God, and he's you know talking like basically, uh, one day this is oh this is it uh, uh, one day perhaps when science darkens the soul of the left, our nation will repent. So. I guess what he's trying to say is that I I'm assuming like just off of that quote specifically he's like saying that science is not something that um 
people on the right and religious people should be listening to, which is a weird thing to say in 2021, right? Unless he, like, means, like, I mean, the big issue with science, and it's always going to be the issue, but it's not an issue at the same point in time. It's just there's information that leads to more questions, more questions, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. always answers. And, like, specifically about this topic, I mean, I feel like this honestly doesn't even fall on science very much. I think it falls on more of your morals and everything yeah. else. And, like, when you believe conception is and, you know, all, like, the heartbeat. I mean, it does throw science into it, but, like, I think I don't know. That's just... One of the things that like I always blew my mind is when people are like, when they try to make these comparisons to different things, or they try to like guilt trip people into other things for like abortions purpose specifically. They're like, oh my god, like this is a hundred percent the worst thing you could possibly do, and they're like, we have to prevent people from getting them, and we have to stop like allowing people to even get like remotely capable of doing these things but these are the same people who when foreshadowing school shootings happen immediately (laughs) go to well why would you take away guns or the ability to get guns because that's people are just going to get them if they really want them anyway yeah they probably won't like that comparison because it's yeah i mean i I know they won't that's why i make it it's because it's it's fucking like it doesn't work like you can't use that argument for one thing and then turn around and also Mm -hmm. unlike the gun debate which you know people people do make that argument where like if you ban guns everything's gonna be great if you ban abortions it actually gets worse for so it's very Mm -hmm. similar in that way for people because as i've mentioned it a couple times but when abortion was legalized in different areas it actually went down (laughs) <laughs> so yeah it's like you're not taking the ability to get an abortion away you're taking the ability to get a safe one away and you're making that's it more true. risky that's for true. literally everything else like i agree yeah i agree with that and like i'm I'm a, I'm a big believer in like every life is valuable like i only i feel like it has to be very situational like i think that like i know a lot of um uh like a lot of people believe it's like you know the upper classes that like you know their kid got pregnant and they wanted to get rid of it like if it's that type of situation like i'm not for it but if it's like there's a couple like medical emergencies that can happen where like the fetus dies and you sometimes have to carry the baby to term and all that jazz i don't i I, that's just god awful for the the mother you know i would never wish it on anybody to or family to go through that well but i mean i think in sorry no, no, I mean, just like, just, I think it's just very, very hard case by case. And it's just never like, it, it will never, they'll never be the answer to yeah. this de- because it's a debate. It, it is what it is. Yeah. And everyone's going to be have their different viewpoints on it. And that's hard. Yeah. What I, what I think is one, one of the dumber things about the whole situation is like, they'll go, um, they'll basically sit and call people who want to do these things and like, they'll, They'll point at like it's just like a super casual thing. Like every time somebody gets pregnant and they do, they're like, ah, you know what? I just don't want this baby. They go and fucking get an abortion. Those aren't the people yeah. getting them. Very no, rarely no, is it uh-uh. somebody like for personal yeah, preference I agree. because like there's so many yeah. other options that they could do before then. Like <laughs> typically if somebody doesn't want a baby, guess what they do? They take fucking birth control. They make dudes wear condoms. Yeah. Like it's not. Yeah. It's not rocket science. Like, <laughs> I no. mean, no, it, and I, I feel like school does a poor job of, of executing that. But I also think it also it, it's also the parenting. Oh yeah. You know, there's so much more to it. And like, I mean, I actually worked with a guy. I think I may have told you this in person, but I don't think you ever said on the podcast. I worked with a guy um, that had worked as a security guard for an abortion clinic. Oh um, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll call it an abortion clinic, but he like it, that's they do more there than just that. They play like he said or something. He, Ah, uh, he didn't tell me. I think it was in a. I'm not for sure which. Oh, which like, one? You know, wherever it was. It was one yeah, of those types. Per se. So. Got it. Yeah, yeah, and like he said, like he would always have to walk people in and out, and like just there would be mobs of you oh, know yeah. super Christian people arguing, saying like Screaming you're a murderer, and yeah. like and like he said, majority of the time, it's just like he said, it was never like those simple like decisions like i just don't need this anymore. Yeah. I this doesn't fit my life. It was always a lot more complex that yeah. I feel like. I feel like a lot of people love making very complex subjects very simple and it's left or oh, right you yeah, know and it's 100%. and it's just it's there's so much more like you know when we start to talking about that shooting case here in a little bit like it'll be like there's a lot to that as well that like 
it's and there's and it's still going on but yeah yeah, but, yeah it's like i always think of that like there's multiple tweets of people like and whether or not these are real or not i don't know but it, it seems like something so dumb that it is real where it's like uh, a lady's go walking to Planned Parenthood and people are screaming at her, calling her a sinner and a piece of shit and blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, anyway, my breast cancer screening's negative, so that's cool. <laughs> no, it's no. Like, well, yeah, fuck. they do a lot of <laughs> you know? other services there. Yeah. Some people actually go there to not get pregnant as they yeah. get condoms and get, other yeah. contraceptive uses. Like, so it's like, no, I'm actually preventing one of those that I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to do that. You well, know? here's the crazy thing is there's people who think that using contraceptives and using things like that yeah. is also still like a fucking shitty thing to do. It's like, bro, like I don't, I don't get. There's no pleasing the, you at that point. Like, it's and I and I think that derives from the Catholics quite a bit. Um, this reminds me of the the forgotten or the lost. <laughs> yeah, <but> yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's <no>, talk about. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, like I, I think honestly, uh, with the Catholics, they believe like contraception believe like like begins at like you know the climax when the the man produces semen and everything like yeah. that. Yeah, and like I. I mean, me personally, I disagree because obviously you could be shooting into someone and it's not their time to release yeah. the egg to be fertilized. So I don't really, you can't. Or they just can't have that. kids or whatever. Like they're just. Yeah. 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 Like, but, like or the you whole could thing be of sterile. A like, barrier method or yeah. something to prevent it. Like it's like you're, you're killing, you're killing people. Uh, your offspring. Like, dude, there's, I produce millions per day. Like I'm yeah. pretty sure. That was, uh, there like was a, a lady. Um, I can't remember her name, um, but she was she was running for president but she was like one of those early kickoffs like in like the 2012 race and she was talking about how um in her home state she was trying to push legislation that uh like basically you could get brought up on charges for masturbation for the same oh my god for that reason i'm like you know how many people would be in jail all of them (laughs) everybody (laughs) everyone everybody yeah (laughs) That's how we get the concentration camps going. We passed that law. We're all screwed. Everybody's fucking beat. We dang off. fucked ourselves in yeah, that one. <laughs> literally. Um, yeah. Oh my God. So, um, moving right along, we got that. Uh, we we foreshadowed it a little bit. The school shooting in Michigan. Yeah. Um, which was I can't remember how many. I think it was five or four six. killed, seven okay. wounded. Did That's you? That's what I'm least. Did you uh, watch the? Uh, there was this weird video where it was like kids inside a room, and oh, I don't watch that many videos of that. I just more like the news. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, so there's this crazy video I saw where they were inside a classroom, and uh, there there's one one kid recording, but um, there's like a knock on the door while they're locked down, and it's very obviously the school shooter. Like it's not. Like it, it's it's a fifteen year old voice, like and he's like sheriff's office, and they're like, uh, no, we're you know we're we're fine where we're at, you know, kind of thing. Like he's trying to get them to open. Oh my lord! And uh, he said he calls him bro. Like I think he fucks up and says bro, and all the kids were like, oh, he said bro, red flag, and they all fucking took off out the window and ran ran away. To like another oh, part yeah. of the building or something. Um, yeah, I heard they're breaking the first level, like ground level yeah. windows to get out. I heard I read a little bit about that too. So fucking crazy. Um, if you look at a picture of this kid, I mean he he I mean you would he you fits never the bill. Say there's a yeah, <laughs> yeah. you never want to say that, but like we've all had those kids in school that are like, man, this kid can come shoot it up. You know what yeah. I mean? And I know like in what I've been reading, there hasn't been enough like like obviously it was premeditated, like he was drawing stuff in class yeah. and there was issues prior and then like the day that it happens the office calls the parents they come in and have like a meeting with the principal with the kid and like and then he, they refuse to take him home they were having concerns and then yeah. like later that day he shoots up the school like yeah what like that's that's nuts like and i know like and then i guess the parents fl- um flee or fled, fled or yeah. whatever they're trying to yeah, go they to were, canada <laughs> Yeah, well, they pulled out four grand and then got caught at some, like, uh, I think it was, like, some factory or some giant um, yeah. industrial building. And they're like, oh, no, we were planning on coming the next day. And it's just like, where are you now? 
like why, why are you 40 miles away and like why don't you just come when we ask and yeah some fishy things are going on and i know their their bills like five hundred thousand. yeah to get them out and they pleaded because i didn't i didn't get into it but i know there was something with michigan law and like involuntary manslaughter yeah they um had apparently bought this um the sun a uh, handgun i think it was sig sig Suser nine millimeter yeah on the 26th of november i think it said and like he was posting on facebook about it so they got him this gun like as a present for christmas and like you know he's showboating it and then they said like since he had access to it they're like kind of akin to the involuntary manslaughter yeah but there were some other laws too that i was gonna get into but i'm like it's a, it's a little too much jargon for me to handle right now yeah but i mean i don't know it's Ugh. It's definitely a shitty situation. And, like, one of the things that you talked about was, like, the drawings that he got brought to the counselor's office for drawings. And, like, they're like, ah, what's going on here? And he said he's designing a video game. And these were all... Oh, I didn't read that. Yeah, they were drawings mm -hmm. of a video game he was designing, and he intend to pursue, pursue a video game design career. Bastard, which scapegoating is, video games. Yeah, which... Yeah, is one thing that could be true. Like I, I drew, I drew a lot of fucked up shit in school, and I've got, I've had a couple drawings taken away, but never once did they ever talk to my parents about them. So it was like, not that you know of. Well, not that I know of. I, my mom definitely would have let me hear it though. Oh, I mean, she would have. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I wouldn't. Have We're gonna let that one slide. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have, uh gotten. You know off that easy but um mm. it's just like i don't know taking things at face value i just don't think is uh something that you can do as a counselor anymore you kind of got to do no. your fucking due diligence a little bit like yeah the parents yeah. set their <laughs> the student's parents never advised the school district that he had direct access to firearms or that they had recently purchased a firearm for him, which they don't that's need also to. also none of their business. Yeah. yeah. But, like, that's not an issue. Like, why why are we even worried about that when you should really worry about, is this kid actually going to do anything? Like, whether yeah. or not the parent, he could have fucking went to somebody else's house, some other friends he had, who knew yeah. his parents had a gun or something if like that. If he was that determined, he yeah. would have done that. My thing is, how did he get the gun in there in the first place? I feel like... I guess I don't know how how densely populated um like where the high school is located yeah. at in Michigan specifically, yeah. but like I mean I feel like a lot of modern day schools have metal detectors. Yeah. Like where like how how did we sneak this gun? And I read one article that said like he had potentially two to three fifteen um round clips, and like they didn't find one of them. I mean, but what what was also nuts is like this ended in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and, it was and like quick. i was i was gonna see if i could find a video because you know sometimes like they do like uh like police reanimations oh it yeah. sounded like from some of the articles like he was like almost like coming from the bathroom and like using that as cover or something like that yeah so i was kind of curious like how that actually played out and how that all went down but it uh, to me from what i've read it seems very premeditated and the parent i don't know it's just fishy that the parents just bounced like well you know versus being uh what's really funny is like I said, they were trying to go to Canada. Uh, they got turned away at the border because they weren't they weren't vaccinated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> oh my god! So they were really trying to flee. No, they hundred percent were. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, um man. Wow. Yeah. So according to wow. the uh, parents' attorney, they said that the gun was locked and he didn't act, have free access. Well, maybe mom and dad brought it during the parent-teacher conference in the middle of school. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's very weird. Like, why would you even... What, what post-incident, how are you going to claim that it was locked up? Like, clearly yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he had either had the code or a combo or whatever it wasn't or know where the keys were yeah and yeah i don't know it'll be interesting to see what comes more as like they you know finally the detain did they detain them today or was it yesterday uh i think it was today so like now hopefully right, find out some more evidence but the fourth <laughs> the fourth yeah. oh we're well we're we're in the fifth well. now but that's fine <laughs> 
That's all right. Uh, uh, oh, well, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it took me a minute there processing. No, like, and there, he, the kid, like, and he's got a stepbrother or um, either older or younger. I can't remember which, but like, there was no indication as of, as of right now, like, if there was bowling involved. But I mean, like I said, if we're if we're thinking the stereotypical kid that we would think that would he would match up with, like, there has to be. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I feel like there is, unless like he's got that serial killer vibe. Then. I mean, I didn't get that right away from him. Yeah, I feel like, um, I don't know. I feel like the the school shooters now and serial killers of old are are not the same. Oh, like, okay. All right. It, I yeah. think it's like a different okay. kind of mentality. Like, uh, it's it's semi premeditated, but in the way of where it's like. I know that I'm going to take a gun and go to school and shoot as many people as I can. But, like, that's it. It's not, like, as super planned. I guess the Columbine guys, yeah. they had it, like, they had it pretty planned out, but it just didn't go off the same way. Like, their pipe mm-hmm. bombs didn't go off. A lot of them were duds. Um, okay. You know, and, like, those kind of things. But I guess what I was trying to say is more like it, it was, like, like not, like, I feel like there's a difference between, like, um, I guess my you shouldn't have said serial killers, but like cold blooded people yeah. versus oh, like, like a people that are emotional. Yeah, like and I don't know, like in like with nursing, like when I've met patients that were like in like really bad states, like you could feel a really big disconnect with them. Yeah. Like they weren't even in the room uh, with you when they were. Yeah. And it's like those people are the people that freak me out the most. Mm-hmm. And like I feel like when I saw this kid's photo, like I didn't necessarily get that vibe. Like a detached like, from reality kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like like that this could this could flip at any moment type yeah. of thing. Like I definitely got some like when just I mean like so just going off a couple pictures, just like vibes that like probably was bullied yeah and you know maybe home life wasn't <laughs> as good as it should well, be well that's what i, I was guess. saying is like it's, it seems more like a retaliation than like a calculated plan of like a like i don't know if if that kid went to our high school i could definitely like pick who he would be like lumped in with in my brain like just like mm-hmm. just by looking at him i'm like oh okay so he's like uh you know like a person that hangs out with like fucking this guy or this guy and i'm like ah okay yeah, yeah you know um, which isn't a bad thing, no but like you said like like i feel like everybody has like those people back in high school that you're like eh, i'm a little concerned about this yeah. kid we'll see what happens you yeah. know what i mean i mean i i'm assuming his parents aren't that cool like i'm assuming that they're probably positive shit um just by based off of what i was reading about the counselor trying to get more information the parents were like oh there's absolutely nothing to worry about and like they just like mm. left like Which even is terrifying because yeah like you would hope no. that they'd be like well i guess we'll fucking we'll look into it and we'll try and talk with them and see what's going on but like when they just com- vehemently just deny shit's going on that's yeah, when you kind of go exactly like, eh, i don't know yeah. Maybe some therapy or something was warranted, but like, you know, people like there's just there's still people I feel like with the old mentality where like your mental health does not matter. Yeah. You know, and I feel like that's really sad. Yeah. If kids have to grow up with that mentality of parents like that. Yeah. Because I don't know, like I feel like we could all be better human <laughs> beings with a little bit of therapy. Like you may yeah. be perfect, but you could be even more perfect. Yeah. But <laughs> oh yeah. One hundred percent. So we'll be uh following that as it develops um and then there's uh just real quick on the uh the maxwell trial the epstein girlfriend lady apparently oh, i've been pronouncing oh, yeah. her name wrong it's apparently it's galane but oh, also i wouldn't would have known she's a piece of shit so i'm not gonna pronounce her name right uh it's more fun to say it jizzlane because it's like jizz lady <laughs> <laughs> yes but thank, nice. thank you to my friend andrea for correcting me on the pronunciation of this piece of shit's name um so jurors at the trial were shown the bis- the the famous epstein massage table where he you know basically peer pressured these underage girls to massage him and then a bunch of photos of his sex toys so oh wow where this lady <laughs> um She's been basically saying that she had no idea about any of it, uh, and now like all these all these pictures are getting shown to the jury. So hopefully, uh, 
they actually brought the table in too, which is wild. But uh, maybe maybe it'll help jog her memory. Yeah, seeing uh, everything again. Mm. Yeah. So um, let's see. There was a uh, her her house manager, um, the manager of her house. Like I guess like a. I don't know. Somebody who's like cleaning her shit, basically, or like having people clean her shit. Rich people have fucking everything, but uh, <laughs> uh said uh, except good moral boundaries. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> no shit. So he testified that uh, Epstein was receiving about three massages every day uh, by the time he left uh, when he quit doing what he was doing in two thousand two. Uh, the the house manager when he quit in two thousand two. Um, mm -hmm. He said that he sometimes found these sex toys while cleaning the massage room and stored them uh, in Ghislaine's back and bathroom. Oh, there we go. Um, mm. Yeah. So, and this is all in Palm Beach, which is where the initial um, what the the case came up, where he got labeled as a sex sex offender. When I still don't understand that case because they're like. Yeah, you're definitely guilty of being a piece of shit. Uh, but then they like flipped it more on like the 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 girls because they were like, "Oh, these are prostitutes," Whoa. but they're like 14, 13, 14. and they're like, wow. "Yeah, these fucking prostitutes." <laughs> it's like, dude, this guy's I mean, well, this okay, guy's okay, having okay, sex with, and they're not though. Like that's the thing. Depending depending on the state, maybe technically consensual age is different, and that's maybe how he bypassed it. Well, he still got labeled like he, as a sex offender, so he, well, he didn't I mean, yeah, bypass it. He, but... he can he'll have no like you'd have to have them, but maybe that's why he like survived uh, the sentencing, like yeah. of going to jail or something. It was like 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 watered down whatever. well they didn't consider it molestation they considered it procuring sex for, with mm. for money with a minor which okay sounds okay. i mean to me it sounds the fucking same but that's because i know that it's the same but like <laughs> and apparently in a court it's like oh if you pay for sex with a minor it's different than straight up molesting a child so i don't know mm -hmm. It's At least she's being compensated, basically, what they're saying. I guess, yeah. The fuckers, man. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and the, oh, the favorite time of the podcast, the Billboard. It is. Top Let's 10. go. All right. We got some got some new ones popping in. Well, not really oh. new. Well, there's a couple new. Um, number one, brand new. It, peaked, or it, it fucking debuted at number one. 30, Adele. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not surprised with that one, actually. Big fan. I love Adele. Tom loves Adele. We all love Adele. Um, mm -hmm. Number two, down from number one last week, Red, Taylor's version, Taylor Swift. So this is her re-releases that she's doing. Up from five at number three, Certified Lover Boy by Drake. Um, And then down from two at four, An Evening with Silk Sonic. Silk Sonic with Bruno Mars and Anderson Pock. Never heard of him. Me neither. Um, <laughs> well, Bruno Mars, of course, but the yeah. other people know. Yeah. Uh, up from six, Dangerous, the double album. We're gonna watch. I fucking <laughs> love it. Keeping it alive. Forty six weeks Keeping on the chart. Alive. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. Um, down from four at number six, still over it by Summer Walker. Never heard of it. Um, oh. this one's kind of random. Uh, new. Raise the roof. Robert Plant and Allison Krauss. Old, okay. Ro old Robert Plant. Still, still kicking. Okay. Still making music. I guess. Um, <laughs> up from eleven and number eight. Sour. Olivia Rodrigo. And then, god damn it, this is a sign of the times right here. Up from twenty-two at number nine. Christmas. Michael Bublé. Well, okay. Be that time. So, yeah, next week it'll probably be Mariah Carey, too. No, I bet. <laughs> it's so iconic, though. That's what sucks. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know if it's because it was a good song or it's, it's just played so much. I don't know. Well, I I think a lot of it comes from all the department stores that play it, too. But what I don't understand, and I saw this posted uh, somewhere. Somebody was like, why why hasn't there been like any new Christmas music? Like it's just people singing the same Christmas songs in different ways. But there's no new Christmas songs. 
or if there are nobody I mean, gives there, a fuck there about are it. but they're not they're not mainstream by any means that's what i'm saying everybody's like no we'll just take the same regurgitated thing over and over and over and over and over again um the proven method <laughs> yeah number 10 the highlights by the weekend yeah um so yeah that's the top 10 there fella very nice very nice very nice oh who who are you gonna thank for this lovely show that I helped provide for everyone? So <laughs> Well, um we already thanked the patrons, Mark, but um Yeah. Yeah, so Good. thanks again. Once again, all the Patreon people, if you wanna give us your money, we'll take it. Um we should probably talk to a financial advisor first, but that's fine. Um go. Mark approves. <laughs> Mark he gives it's definitely us, worthy worth it. He gives us hard earned money and he's been on the show like yeah. fucking six times or something yeah. now well yeah. i don't know about this three two or three this one i don't remember uh, the other one i think it's been two on this one and then i think an, another two on the previous makes sense um i think yeah but yeah if you don't want to if you don't want to do that and you're like man i would love to help you guys well here's what you can do fucking click the little share button and share just share it to all the people in your contacts list I don't care if it's home phone numbers, people you don't talk to, that number you've been refusing to delete for some strange reason, you send it to them. (laughs) (laughs) And then, and then if you have a Apple product of some kind, go to the Apple podcast app and leave us a review. And if you put one with words in it, that'd be sweet. And I'm working on getting stickers made for people who do that. So a little, a little incentive um Ooh. and if you don't have an apple product apple device uh you could just you know share us or go to the youtube because everybody has youtube and like and subscribe and then check out our friends the no new friends podcast remedy room kicking it with the kellys i'd say dutch in denver but i guess he kind of just stopped doing it which is random but oh yeah uh but yeah, Mark, thanks for coming on and yeah, no joining problem. me again. Fun, as always. Heck yeah, maybe one day you'll come on and Shane will be here too. It's kind of like oh my that. God. Maybe me and Shane need to have a conversation without you. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty fun. Um, that would be interesting. That'd be interesting. It reminds me of that old joke where it's like, "I've never seen so and so and Batman in the same room." It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are you guys the same person? Yeah. They might be. Who knows? uh we'll never know all right well that's it for today folks uh tip your bartender please (laughs) yep i've had enough peace out bitches